Hey expats and travelers alike, today we're here to talk about expat life in Panama City. We've broken it down into three parts, moving, living, and working. I'm Josh with Expats Everywhere. And I'm Kaylee. And this is our review preview show. This week was another close race in the polls, but Panama City managed to beat Perth and Prague, who were the other two that were close to the top. But Panama City pulled it out, so let's start with moving there. All right, moving. Panama is technically located in the North American continent. However, most people use its more cultural region, Central America. It's the southernmost country in Central America and is very thin, so lots of beaches. That's right. The Caribbean Sea is on the north and the Pacific Ocean to the south. It also borders Costa Rica to the west and Colombia to the east. Panama City is right on the Gulf of Panama, which dumps into the Pacific Ocean. The Panama Canal is a famous location right by the city. The opening of the canal transformed trade because of being able to transport goods between the Pacific and the Atlantic. This canal is extremely important for the country's economy for many reasons, but specifically because it brings in a variety of different companies to the city. So what's that mean? Expat jobs. We'll get to more specific job information in a little, but let's break down what you would need for a visa. If you're a citizen of the US, Canada, and the EU, and a few other places as well, you can enter Panama for six months with a valid passport, a return or onward plane ticket, and proof of finances. This gives you the chance to enter the country and find work. But remember, this is a tourist visa, so you can't work on this visa. You have to get a work permit. If you're not from one of those areas, you most likely only have 30 days upon entry. Now, the good thing is that you can enter and then apply for an extension with the Servicio Nacional de Migración Panamá. You also have the option of leaving for 72 hours every three months, which is legal, but you can't work on this type of visa. So what about work visa? If your company sends you there, they'll take care of the details. If you move there and want to work for a local company, then you'll need to obtain a work permit, which can be a little difficult. Local companies are only allowed to employ a certain amount of foreigners, and this is firmly regulated. Your best option is to arrive on a tourist visa, find a job, then apply for a work permit after your company guarantees it. Most likely, your employer will need to prove that you have special skills in not taking a job away from a Panamanian. That can be tough, but if you can get past that, then your employer will become your sponsor. As a foreigner, you will need to acquire an attorney to apply for your work permit on your behalf. They will go through the Ministry of Labor. Normally, these visas are for one year, so it's doable, but it can be a lengthy process if you plan to go about it yourself. Yeah, for sure. Another option is to apply for your permanent residence visa, because then you won't need to have a specific work permit to work. To obtain this kind of visa, you'll need to invest or buy property worth $300,000 US dollars, or of course, you can become a permanent resident if you marry a Panamanian. Lastly, if you live in Panama for five years, then you can apply for this permanent residency visa. As far as good neighborhoods for expats, we'll give you five good ones to look into. The first one is Casco Viejo, which is easily the most popular area for expats. While it's a huge tourist destination, it also boasts some of the city's oldest architecture, a UN heritage site, and some fantastic local culture. It is known for being pricey though. Another neighborhood is El Cangrejo, which is great because it's centrally located and has options for people to buy or rent. It's full of cafes, restaurants, and bars, and many people speak English there. This one is more moderately priced. Number three is Clayton, which has been a solid area for expats for almost a century. It's not centrally located, but it does give you tropical suburban life, and it's located near City of Knowledge Business Park. Punta Pacifica has been growing in popularity in recent years as it's one of Panama City's newest neighborhoods. But here, life is certainly more expensive with luxury real estate along the ocean, giving you phenomenal views. Lastly is San Francisco. Like El Congrejo, you'll have options to buy or rent and is among one of the best neighborhoods if you work in central Panama City. Let's talk about living in Panama City. The culture is largely Spanish and Caribbean, but loads of foreigners flock to the city due to the work and location, so it's quite a melting pot. For sure. It's a booming city with an urban population of almost 900,000 people and around 1.5 million people in the metropolitan area. Interestingly enough, those of Chinese and afro antillian origin make up a large part of the population. Back in the 19th century, Chinese immigrants moved to Panama to work on the railway, and then those in the Caribbean came to work on the canal. The official language is Spanish. People do speak English as well, but it's probably best to know at least a little bit of Spanish. 85% of those in Panama are Roman Catholic. Now, Panama City has a lot to offer for expats. There are plenty of malls for shopping if that's the thing that you're into. Of course, there's bars and clubs if you prefer that scene. For those history buffs out there, museums and UNESCO World Heritage Sites are in the capital. 
they also have music festivals and art. Like we said before, Panama is surrounded by lots of water and Panama City is right on the water, so that means water sports and beach activities, those are extremely popular. But it's not all about water because you can move a little more inland and experience mountains and jungles. The climate is tropical and humid and it pretty much stays in the 70s and 80s Fahrenheit all year round. Even though it's by the water, it's good to know that it's normally not affected by hurricanes. True. So hurricanes, no, but mosquitoes, unfortunately, yes. Ugh. You might want to get some vaccines before moving to Panama City just to help fight some of those threats from bugs and sometimes even food and water, but those are a little less worrisome in the city. However, be sure to wear your bug spray both day and night to help keep you safe from diseases like malaria and dengue. Watch out for those stray dogs and cats also. Let's get you some numbers so you can get an idea of the cost of living. The city is not cheap as some might think. A meal at an inexpensive restaurant is around $11 USD and a three course meal for two at a mid-scale restaurant can be as much as $50. Yeah, for a domestic beer you're looking around $2.50 and for a coffee, three bucks. The city has a good metro system and is fairly cheap with local fares around 25 cents and a monthly pass being as cheap as 20 bucks. A one bedroom apartment in the city center can cost you around $900 and a three bedroom close to $1,500. Move out of the city center for cheaper places such as a one bedroom being around $600 and a three bedroom being around $1,000. Utilities are around $100 and internet around 50, so it is kind of pricey actually. Yeah, a little bit. Before we talk about working in Panama City, we want to take a minute to give a few shout outs to those of you who are commenting on our channel and Instagram. Mr. Blue had a couple of comments on our Portugal video. He asks us to recommend a particular place or city in Portugal that we think is a good place to visit. We've been to Portugal quite a bit and we actually call it a hidden gem of Europe. Yep. Now it seems that a lot more people are becoming interested in Portugal. So here's our answer about visiting the four different regions of Portugal. We've been to Braga in the north and that's not really where you want a vacation. So that leaves us Porto, Lisbon, and then the southern places like Albufeira, Lagos, and Faro. Lisbon is a great capital city with lots to do. There are a ton of historical and cultural sites. The weather is great and the city has a wonderful energy. In the south, it's going to be far beachier. Mm -hmm. You have awesome beaches, resorts, and it's laid back. Porto, on the other hand, is a blend of the two places in the sense that it's a good sized city, it has architectural beauty, and views of the sea and river. If you're into port wine, you've got to visit. Mm, we love Porto. Yep. Our next comment comes from Benny Wan on our Nairobi video who talks about how a foreigner can fit in with the initial help of a local mm. and then they'll be just fine. Thanks for the encouraging comment on Expats Moon in Nairobi. Another one from our Nairobi video is from Maureen M. She said, hello. Hi, Maureen. Uh, we have Uber in Nairobi, which is quite affordable and most people use it. We failed to touch on this about your rideshare options in Nairobi. Like Maureen said, it's 100% an option and a popular option at that. So there you go, another great transportation option for you in the Kenyan capital. Now on to working in Panama City. Like we mentioned before, a big part of Panama City and Panama in general is the canal. Yeah. This opens up loads of jobs where businesses work directly and indirectly in relation to the canal. So think anything from trade to logistics to advertising when it comes to that canal. Anything having to do with the shipping industry is also big in the city. We certainly can't fail to mention tourism either. Loads of tourists flock to the canal for a visit, so anything in the tourism industry will offer jobs. Their economy is very stable and one of the fastest growing in Latin America. Among other possible job areas are in the service industry, finance, construction, agriculture, and banking. It's also possible to work digitally there and a nice place to retire if that's the stage of life you're in. Panama has been smart with their tourism and has developed a variety of economic incentives for contractors and investors in the tourism industry. This is great for expats looking for jobs. It's also opened up real estate jobs as more expats are moving to the city. So there are really a lot of job opportunities here. But remember, the company needs to prove that you aren't taking away a job from a Panamanian in order for them to be under their quota. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay up to date on what's happening in the world of expats everywhere. On that note, let's quickly let you know what is happening in our world. The biggest news we have going on right now is Kaylee and I are moving to Portugal. Yay! We've been stuck here in the US because of COVID, but things are finally opening up and we've applied for our residency visa. We're vlogging all about this and showing you all the massive checklists that we have. So be sure that you join the journey with us. We've recently done a collaboration with Cecile, who is an expat in Turkey. We interviewed her about life as an expat there, and then Josh was on her channel talking about being an expat. So don't miss that. You can check it out in the description below. Yeah, and stay tuned as we have more expat interviews coming up for you, and we continue to share our lives and about how we're moving. We're now moving on to the letter Q, which is an interesting one. So if you're a subscriber, head over to our community tab page and vote for the next city. If you're not a subscriber, come on! <laughs> Hit the subscribe button and make that vote count. 
Remember, we post these videos every other Thursday. That's all for this review preview show. Until next time, bye. Bye.